Hi, everyone, and welcome to episode nine of the Here I Am podcast, a podcast where uh, we are here to be our full and our authentic selves and talk about mental health, life, um, relationships, or whatever kind of comes up here. And I am here with a dear friend of mine who I happen to meet through the TikTok apps, and her name is Tia. Hi, Tia. How are you? Hello, world. And on. <laughs> Not Look, I getting the problem. world involved. I like yeah. it. I, I, I have had so far. I've had I have had listeners in uh, Bulgaria and like England and Australia. So I mean, you're technically talking to the world right now. Technically, We're keeping the options open. We we'll just you know throw the net really wide, see what you can catch. Hell yeah, love it, love Looks it. Like the dating life. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Uh, before we actually like really do uh, jump into everything, uh, why don't you tell everybody what your social handles are? So you have everyone, oh here's my dog buddy, by the way. Um, for anyone who's watching this, Buddy's very first appearance on the podcast. Hi, dude. Can I? Yes, please. Can I continue having a conversation here? No. Come on, buddy. For those of you watching on YouTube, you're welcome. For those of you not, uh, the Here I Am podcast is on YouTube if you want to check it out. <laughs> just imagine the cutest dog you've ever seen showed up on YouTube. You're welcome, world. You're welcome, YouTube. This is probably gonna get like the most views of all time now. Just like I just want to see the dog, but like the 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 view time is gonna be like thirty seconds just to see the dog. <laughs> and they're off. Um, and they're yeah. like, okay. So social handles. Um, uh, we met on TikTok, so you can follow me on TikTok at uh, Tia So Fierce. I also stream on Twitch, um, and so it's Tia So Twitchy, and that is what my Instagram handle has become now, Tia So Twitchy. So you're welcome. Oh, look at you bl blending in the Twitch and the Instas at the same time. Oh, just... I love it. Um, so my usually when I meet somebody through TikTok and I'm going to bring them on here, I have to ask, what made you decide to join the Tickety Talkity apps? Oh, the Tickety Talks. Um, you know, so I had gone through a divorce. I've been divorced for about a little over a year and a half. And so dating in your 30s after divorcing a mom, kind of situation. Um, and I had a relationship and we had broken up. It was very on and off, but it was the first time we broke up. <laughs> Should have been a clue. And um, <laughs> <laughs> so I, you know, I'd always watched TikTok when COVID had happened and I saw a lot of the, um, the funny stuff, but I gravitated towards those people that were really open with their emotions and, and people that were like crying videos, which I know now that I have gone through the TikTok world and put up stuff like that, people are like, you're just wanting attention. Why don't you like start crying and film it? But I saw people that were going through what I was going through and I didn't feel so alone. Mm -hmm. So I kind of started it that way. Um, and I have, for those that have followed me, uh, purged my TikTok twice. I know we're probably going to go into that and I'm back a third time. Cause I don't take a hint. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, uh, I, I, when I found out that you, that you came back, cause I remember when you said, Hey guys, I'm, I'm leaving, I'm doing, I'm leaving TikTok for, for mental health purposes. I was like, wow. Because I think it's really hard because like, I know for me, like, you know, I live by myself. I have two dogs. Like that's great. But it's always like, I always use like social media as kind of like an escape for me, but granted like social media can get down into like, yeah you know down the dark rabbit hole of comparing yourself to other people and then like oh wow I wish I had what they're having right now or like especially like if you you know being single and alone you're just like oh look at that cute couple oh I wish I could do that with a partner or I quit this that or the other um so yeah like when you what made you want to take that break when you did yeah. So I had deleted it the first time because a lot of it was because like we had, we had broken up, but then we got back together and I really just wanted to purge all the, the sadness and, and some, for me, it's was sort of like the memories and not in a, like a bad way, like eternal sun, sunshine of the spotless mind kind of thing. But I just, I wanted to leave that chapter behind. And so, I, you know, kind of restarted. It was a lot more fun, um, TikTok and stuff like that. And um, connected with a lot of people that way. Um, and I would put up some, some real stuff. I try to be very genuine of kind of what I'm going through, but I'm actually a really big introvert, surprisingly. Yeah. Um, so that's why I stopped that time was because I was just getting so overwhelmed 
with the people pleaser in me of wanting to show up for everybody, Mm. you know, um, because that was when it started, you know, I went up to what 38,000 followers and I was just like, what is happening? People are reaching out to me and, and I want to be there. I genuinely want to, I never want anybody to feel alone and going through anything, you know, dating or being single in your thirties or whatever it is, being a single mom or having a hard time parenting or just going through depression or anxiety or ADHD or whatever. Um, I know what it's like to feel alone. And so I feel obligated to show up, but in that capacity, like in any capacity, I'm barely staying above water sometimes in my own personal life. So people were, if I wasn't posting, they were checking in, which is so sweet. I don't want people to stop, but I, the people pleaser in me was like that battle in between of like, how do you show up? And, and then what do I post? And there, it was things of like, if you dated people, I never use names, but you know, people kind of, they figuring out which ones they were. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> like, they're like, that like video that, is that, about me. And I'm like, it probably was. So. Sounds so familiar. I don't. <laughs> that sound, what is that? Um, so there was just a lot of, I felt um, like I actually, um, and you know, a lot of people might not even know this because I don't share a ton of stuff on TikTok because I want everybody to feel welcome. But I am a Christian, so yes, tell him, dog. He said yes. <laughs> he said praise him. Oh. My dog is just like, uh, something's outside. They always think that something's outside. And nothing's outside, but right. I'm like, okay. Yeah, but I think it was just the. I'm a lot more of I would say like a liberal, liberal Christian or whatever. I I never. It doesn't matter what you are. I never want anybody to feel unwelcome, but for me, it was like, I was trying to please everybody and you can't not yeah. be happy. And so it just drained me to no end. Yeah. And so I literally was just like, I wanted the privacy mm-hmm. and, you know, some people, um, especially being, I mean, I don't know if this happens with you and your, I think I'd asked you about like your interactions with TikTok, but for me, it's a lot of male followers um yeah and and I did like the dating stuff like for teleport did like speed dates and stuff but a lot of people are like sup sup girl yeah yeah yeah. I'm not here for that I'm here to have a I'm here to have a good time not a long time (laughs) no I I I totally hear you on that I know for me like uh I I totally get the 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 people pleasing aspect of everything uh because I know that's happened with me and my following and a lot of times I am trying to show up for people um but I, it took me a long time to kind of like set my own kind of boundary of like, because sometimes it's just like, I don't have the mental capacity to, to help right now. And as guilty as I, I felt about doing that, it, it was just for me to protect my own self. And I, and, and I think that's important for, for anyone, social media following or no, uh, in life to, you know, sometimes you got to be like, I can't right now. Yeah. But it doesn't mean that I'm abandoning you or it doesn't mean that I'm not wanting to be there for you. I just don't know how I can possibly help right now. And it's like, especially like if you're going through it too, I'm very used to like, you know, pouring out my cup into other people and then be like, oh, there's still some condensation in there. I'm still good. Come on. Come on. It's, it's fine. It's fine. There's, there's something in there. Let's, let's, let's keep going. And and it's taken me therapy and like a really long time to like, go like, you, you need to take care of you first, because if you don't, you're not going to be any good to anybody, not let alone like yourself. And, you know, I'll, I would end up going into like a really dark headspace and I would be there for like weeks because I'm still trying to yeah. put something out. And even if I felt like, five percent better of it all right i'm good that's fine like no no no. it's yeah. like take your time so like i remember when i was first starting out i was going um i was going i went live every night for like almost three two to three hours um wow. for like three months in a row i was doing that and that drained the crap out of me because like it's like you have to be on right you're like still trying to like entertain and talk to people and get to know them and for me i was like hey get to know this other side of me it uh it's not just like this 
sad emo dude on the internet or whatever. Don't just uh, show up to cry for everybody. So, 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 someone literally just said like, dude, you're the fucking biggest emo person I, I've seen. I've been uh, following you for like a year. And I'm like, uh, yeah, you're, you're missing the point a little bit, but I mean, I get where you're coming from. Um, and I was just like, okay. And I was like, and clearly the, the videos where I'm trying to like hype people up, is not clearly not showing up on your FYP. Um, so like whenever I'm emotional, that does show up for you. So I don't, I don't know. You check your FYP then. And go yeah. on, okay? <laughs> go on my page. How about you go on my page and start liking my positive post then, huh? Yeah. Um, but I mean, it, it is, it is what it is. And then like, you know, yeah, when you are vulnerable, I mean, you do get, you do get hate or you get people trying to solve it for you. And it's like, mm-hmm. I'm not asking you to solve it. I'm being vulnerable and, and showing the side of me to a, for me to get it out. And then two, to be like, if someone relates to it and they go, Oh my God, like me too. And it's like, yeah, yeah. you're not alone. It's, it's for me, it, it for me, the, the, a lot of the messages that I would get is about how much it's been helping them and, and all those things. And, um, I'm just trying to like, you know, yeah. just show up for people and, and try to help them. And then when it comes to like the, the dating aspect of it, or like, yeah, most of my followers are women. Um, the, the male following is growing because like a lot more dudes are going like, Oh, me too. And it's actually usually when I post like a lifting video, which is very rare that I do, but they see like, Oh, this bro, this is a dude. This is a, a dork who does lift. Like he does, like he, he yeah. can lift weights and it's so all get dudes that way. And then they'll be like, and they'll see like me being emotional about stuff. And they're all like, bro. Yeah. Me too. And it's like, yeah, like men need to be able to, to show their emotions and we need to normalize it and we need to like, let it, you know, be a thing because like for me I you know you see like the the suicide rates and how high it is much more higher it is for men than it and it's because like like I get it you feel like you can't do it you're always told your whole life to man up and deal with stuff and so I'm just like all right if me being open and vulnerable helps like somebody out anybody out that's great like I'm willing to do it and that's where this podcast is kind of come into play where I'm just trying to um create this thing and have people share their stories and hopefully somebody can relate to it and know that they're not alone in it. And that, uh, you know, that they, whatever they're going through, they can get through it. Yeah. I think that's how you and I had connected is when I started following you was, um, your emo stuff, which is, um, <sighs> yes. Okay. Boo. I see you. Um, <laughs> again, just, go emo yeah, here right I, now. We gotta, here we got to do. It's not a phase mom. It's not a phase. It's not a phase. Um, but for me, like it was, I have always kept, um, very independent. Like one thing too, that I had seen about your stuff was, um, you know, you'd said something about like, I don't have parents. And I was like, Oh, who's this? Let me see what's up. Um, because I don't have parents in my life, not in the same way, you know, they've left or there's, you know, safety stuff and stuff like that. And for both. Um, and I've been like that for a long time, but I was like, there's a person that is like real, you know, cause I, I do think that you can tell, and I would, I would assume even like non-content creators, you can sense when people are being genuine versus when it's like you, you're wanting somebody to follow you rather than yeah. hearing what you are. And so your stuff like really drew me in. And I remember like, I was kind of shocked that you followed me and then there was like, haha house, which is really funny. You just reacts to stuff, which would, and I remember they were like, oh, Tia. And I was like, how do y'all know my name? Who? Like, I'm just nothing. What are you guys talking about? Yeah. Yeah. yeah but that's what I really drew me to your stuff was that you were very, very genuine in everything you did. Well, I'm glad my acting is paid. No, I'm just kidding. Uh- <laughs> like Hollywood is at the door. Hi. Hello. No, um, no, I appreciate that. And that, that's what, uh, like TikTok is like the first place that I was just like actually uh, being genuinely myself. Cause I remember when I first started, I was trying to like entertain people and just come up with as much content as possible, silly, funny, thirst trappy, whatever. Um, like trying to show like my dorky, funny side. And then like one day it was just like, I got, I was really depressed 
and I needed to like just vent and I had no one to vent to. So I said, fuck it. I'm going to put out this out into the, the yeah. realm of the internet and see. And then that's when it just kind of took off from there. And I'm like, that's weird. How dare. And like, you know, I was where the, again, the idea of the podcast came up. Like, okay, here I am. Oh, he mentioned the name of the podcast in the podcast. Yeah. I love love to meet the people when they get to the fuck it, like just fuck it point. I'm like, yeah, those are my people. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I, 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 (laughs) yeah, I very, I very much hit that point. Cause, uh, like you were saying like earlier before, like, like, uh, yeah, I'm a giant people pleaser, the same. And everything that I've done in my life was always trying to appease other people. And, uh, now here and right now, this is me doing something to make me proud. Yeah. Yeah. And you're doing a, first of all, I mean, anybody watching this podcast, Hey, people on the world in, in Bulgaria, <laughs> welcome. Um, this dude be killing it. But, uh, I was going to say like what brought me back and it's so funny. It's not the, the followers, although I do have some amazing followers that are genuine and kind and not creepy and anything like that. They're genuine and kind but it's connections. And that is what I realized what I was showing up for, like showing me, showing myself. It was, I was dying for genuine connection. And, and in the sense of like, of showing some very vulnerable parts of like, you just wanted, I I don't want somebody to fix it, but I just wanted somebody to even just sit with me and understand. And that's what drew me to when I was going through the lowest of the lows and in a divorce and, you know, first breakup and things like that, that I saw these people like just in that place too. And I remember just watching some of the videos of people um, and they were crying videos and, but they were very much there. And I just bawled with the, and it's like, you just wanted somebody to sit and understand. Yeah. Yeah. More than anything. Yeah. And yeah, no, I, 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 I totally get that. And yeah, that, uh, for me, that was like a benefit. I'm sure it has been for you. Like when you do post something kind of emotional and people are going like me too. And in your head, you're like, oh, wow, I really am not the only one that whole, like, I, whenever someone says like, you're not alone when I'm in it, I'm like, fuck you. Like, yes, I am. I'm alone in this right now. Cause that's what depression does. Depression just like, yeah. Yeah. So, someone told me this really funny, not funny, but it was like a really interesting quote. It's like, um, depression is probably like the, the, the most like populated club of all time, but it's the club that you feel the most isolated in. <laughs> yeah. You know? And I was just like, yeah. that is, that's so, that is so incredibly true. Cause you're like, when you're in it, you always feel like there's no one out there and you don't want to reach out because like you, you're afraid that you're going to be a burden onto somebody else. You don't want to like dump your shit onto someone else or whatever. And for me, I'm trying to, uh, I, I'm like the king of doing that. Just like shutting out, but nothing suffering on my own, but I've, I'm starting yeah. to get a little bit better about admitting to people going like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not doing so hot right now. Yeah. And they're like, All right, what, here's what's going on. And they'll be like, Oh dude, yeah, you got this. Like it's you're gonna and and it's just kind of like nice to be able to just vent it out. If it with even if there's like no solution, sometimes it's just about getting the shit out of your head. Yeah, it's just about the connection. I mean, that's the same with me of like, I mean, people that have followed me and that saw pre-purge times two. Um, you know, I'm I'm very bubbly. I'm, I can, I can be, I can come across as an extrovert. I can come across really funny. I mean, I like to think I'm a good time, you know what I'm saying? But, um, (laughs) like there is those, those times where I'm, I'm not that. Yeah. And and it, it feels like I always have to put on this brave face. Like I, um, Robin Williams was always one of my favorites. And, and when people would talk about you know, um, like some of the quotes or whatever that like, you don't know who's suffering with what, cause people would never see it. They'd be like, oh, you're keeping it all together. Whether it's in my marriage, like I have two kids for those that don't know, my oldest is autistic. Um, my ex-husband was in the army. I did it all alone most of the time. And like, people just be like, oh, I was the one to get things done. But, and you see this quote unquote confidence 
but you don't see me like I'm, I told you that I was um, trigger warning for anybody, you know, suffering from depression or anxiety. Like I wanted to take my life multiple times to the point of like, yeah, it was not great. And people don't see that and don't know that. And they uh-huh. see those, those videos of me being happy and bubbly. And they're like, they don't check up on those people. No. They're like she's got it. She's good. Yeah. Uh, one of the, one of the common threads through this podcast I've been asking people has been, you know, a lot of people look up to you for things and like, uh, they think you have your shit together and that you never have a tough day. And I'm saying that's wrong. Am I right? And they go, yeah. Like, cause you don't see it. Cause like, you know, uh, I've had guests on who are like alcoholics. And if you met them, you would never have guessed. Down over here. <laughs> <laughs> the wine goes away. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Sorry. That was bad. That's bad. I'm, I'm really, I love everybody. My bad. Um, <laughs> No, that's funny. Uh, <laughs> but, 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 but like, that's the thing, like, that's the thing, like, you don't, like, you know, you never, you never know. That's, you know, that's why I keep trying to tell people like, fucking be kind because you have no idea the battles that people are dealing with. And usually like for me, and I'm sure you've gotten this too, when you get a lot of hate and a lot of it for me is, man, they must be really going through something right now. If they are deciding to lash out at some random stranger on the internet. Mm-hmm. and it's like and I, for me i'm like okay there's something um deeper that has to go on there um yeah so when you were saying uh you know your your ex-husband was in the army and you were pretty much raising your kids on your own because he was probably deployed mm-hmm. uh, when you got divorced how difficult of that was that a transition of going to like single mother but also trying to co-parent with someone else at the same time. It was, I have to say the, um, one of the hardest things, I mean, I'd wanted to divorce multiple times. Um, but for me, I didn't really, I didn't really have my parents in my life. I mean, I didn't have my parents in my life. So his family was my family. So there was a lot of wounds that came or the, that I'm still working through. Um, and we're trying to mend bridges there. Obviously him and I have kids together. We want, you know, um, there to be some civil stuff. Yeah. But I lost, you know, a family that I had for 11, almost, yeah, like 11 years, 11 and a half years. Um, and I really learned who loved me and who was going to stick it out because mm-hmm. the people that, um, stuck by my side. And if I said something wrong, if I've been like, Hey, this, you know, this is what happened. This was a fight or whatever. They'd be like, you were wrong for saying that. Like you, that was wrong, but I can understand this, this, and this, like they would, you know, there was both rather than just completely shutting me out. Yeah. So I was learning that on top of like, I literally was, I felt like I, it, I had nobody. Hmm. And then to, you know, go back into quote unquote, the dating world of being, you know, 30 something, but looking 20. So with, you know, two kids, one was with her Marissa Tomei impersonation right there. That's a deep cut of a reference. Cause I don't know how many people that's like Marissa Tomei from my cousin Vinny, like that, that's the, that's a reference. That, that's, that's a cool. We need to clip it. You need to, we need that's to literally it. like anybody like in their 20s will probably not get that reference because no. I grew up with that I grew up with my parents watching that movie yeah. so like, I get that reference but I'm 35 uh and I don't want to say like any age older because I feel like that would offend a lot of people but like I don't know I don't know if a lot of people in their 20s would know that movie no that's what I say so I'm 34 but everybody's like how old are you I'm like 29 for the what is that the sixth year in a row because it's 29 30 you're one you're two you're three Three, four, six, because they're like, you're 32. I'm like, do you know how to count? It's 29 for six year old. Hey, math, math is hard, okay? Don't judge. <laughs> math, <laughs> we're doing the maths. Um, but yeah, that, I mean, yeah, that was, and that still is, you know, and I think for me, like the hardest part of, of my mental health, of being a single mom, um, 
raising my kids. Um, I mean, we split custody, but I still have them on his weeks from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. So yeah, yeah. I still have them all the time. And having literally no, no back burner to, to, you know, no person to lean on and then trying to date, but keep that, you know, like, cause I don't ha- have anybody to be, meet my kids until like six months, but like the juggle of finding a partner that also wants to take that on. Cause you do, I do feel like I never, listen, I can do it on my own. I've proved that. I never want to just unload on somebody and have them just be like, here, here's, you know what I mean? Like, I just want somebody to do it all for me. I want a partner. Yeah. Um, but feeling like just scared that somebody's not only going to like, yeah, I think I could find somebody for me, but you know, what about, you know, the aspects of kids and there's, there's so much of so many pieces to it. And then I do have, you know, a lot of trauma that like, I, I am very anxious. I have massive ADHD. Thank you world. It works sometimes, but you know, like it, my, my anxiety comes stems from that a lot of times and some from trauma. And I need a lot of like transparency with people, not in like a cheating way, but I just need, if I, if I feel like something is off, it triggers me and with my anxiety and I want to talk it out. So I'm a very like direct person and it's like shying people off a lot of times because they're like, you know, stop overthinking things or it's, but I'm like, even do you feel I, like it's a, like a, like it's a, a, like an anxious attachment style? Oh yeah, for sure. There's that. Yeah. For, for sure. And yeah, so, yeah, yeah. like, I was just talking to near Steph experience for those that follow me and know Steph and I are, you know, usually doing stuff. Cause we've kind of, we've become like TikTok besties and like just good friends in real life. And I was just FaceTiming her the other day of like, we would talk, you know, we talk through situations of our lives of like, okay, I know that sometimes it's that my anxiety, the issue is, is that like, I second guess myself a lot Mm -hmm. because am I just being anxious or is this something that really is wrong that we need to address? Because a lot of times I, I automatically assume it's my fault. Yeah. Fix it. Yeah. And I'm yeah. being so anxious with whatever in a, in a partner. And a lot of times I'm fine. That's the thing is like, I can come off confident until I, cause I have major abandonment issues until I start. Same. like, Yeah. Until I start liking somebody enough. And then I'm like, now I'm scared. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's super weird. And I'm so <laughs> sorry. It's like <laughs> when feeling, when, when feelings start getting involved, it's like, no, no, I'm going to no, 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 ask no, no, for no. this. <laughs> no, don't like them it's like you know but it is like and that's like you know and this just everything like I mean yeah so I don't even know what the question was what were we talking about <laughs> <laughs> I was just asking how hard of a transition it was for your, for you after uh your divorce be going from like having two people to help parent to co-parenting as like a single person but you definitely answered it um and yeah. you brought up dating and so like I, do you feel because I, I I've come across and I've met a lot of uh, single mothers who are trying to date. And do you feel like it makes it harder to find a person because you feel like men are going like, Oh, she has kids. I, I don't want to deal with that type of thing. Or is it, do you find like you're, you're becoming um, you're, you're a lot more cautious with who you choose to date because you want to like almost vouch for this person before you introduce your kids to it. Cause you said you had a six month rule and I think that's great. I think that's a wonderful rule to have because yeah. you know, you don't, you won't have the cycling of people coming in and out all the time. Um, yeah. But yeah. So like, what, and, and, and I don't want to say, because I, and I hope it doesn't come off this way of me saying like, do you think your kids are like a burden of you dating? I'm like, no, that's, that's not a fucking thing at all. Cause kids are your kids. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Have you met children? Okay, sorry. The best, kind, the, the, the best, kind, the best of kind of burden. The best kind of burden. The best kind. I love you guys. If you ever see this on the internet, I love you both to pieces, but also stop asking me for things every two seconds. They're going to they're gonna stop giving you Mother's Day presents and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. 
Thank you. Flip you the bird. <laughs> they're, all, they're like, here's your, here's your happy Mother's Day. Got it in my pocket right here for you. Right. Um, yeah. Because it's not a thing. Because like, they, they're your kids. Like, you love them to death. They're the most important part of your life. Like that. So I don't ever want it to come off like that. Uh, because, and if there's a, if there's a person who does think like that, like, get some help because yeah. it's effed up. Um, but. Well, yeah, like, I do, have do something you f- to think about that because be oh, so sorry, don't mean. No, you no, 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 I'm done. Go for it. <laughs> it was like you, me, you, me. Um, so I have the rocks me, I know, right? <laughs> it was like, oh, oh. anyways. Um, so I, I was a, a strange kind of bird. So, um, still a little strange kind of bird. Um, I didn't meet my mom until I was 16, or my my sister. I grew up with my dad. I'm not going to share too much. And I, I, I told you this, like, you know, just because whatever, but so I didn't grow up seeing a household like together and I didn't grow up seeing a marriage. And I really, I had to grow up really, really hard and really fat, like really fast by myself. And I was not a kid person. And so I, and again, I love you darlings. If you see this, uh, you guys are the greatest things that's ever happened to me. But before that, I, I was never going to have them. I did not. I was not the girl that was like, I want to be a stay at home mom. I want to be this. Now, as soon as I had my kids, I was like, I was all, all in. Like, I was like, this is what I was made to do. Um, and I'm an introvert and I've, it's, it's hard to balance being for me being a mom, because it's like, it is like, just, it just being around people. And my children, I love them. And they, that's what children do. They're growing and they're learning and they, they need a lot and they, you know, a lot of attention and they take because that's what kids are doing. That's, that is their job. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. It's just difficult for me. Oh and yeah. So being drained. And so when it comes to dating, I'm already tapped out because of that. And so like, I'm already kind of working at a deficit, maybe in my mental health or whatever. And I'm trying to balance that on my own. Um, so it's not necessarily that I'm picky with people because of kids. It's picky because I'm, I'm drained and I'm picky because like, I went through a marriage that I'm like, I will never go through that again, ever. So my standards are so much higher, but then my time is less. And um, it is hard because like, dating in your 30s like you can catch some youngins and you catch some, some oldens so you can catch oldens. the next one wide <laughs> throw it Love out it. there and you're like 25 who cares um <laughs> but the thing is is that it is like <laughs> sorry i guess picture you go 25 and ready to thrive in this like left i look like i might be 25 and something um <laughs> This is probably going to be a funnier podcast than I think I meant for it to be. But um, <laughs> I like how you came. I'm going to make this a really sad podcast, and then you're cracking jokes left and right. Damn it! I know. I did text you. I was like, I think I have some heavy stuff, and then I was like, I got some wine. Never mind. Um, I'm like, I love Jesus, Ooh. and he made wine. So don't that- worry. We can we we can we can still dive into the heavy stuff. It's okay. Yeah. Well, oh, we shall. We shall. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> it is hard. Like. Here's what I've decided as a single mom, and I don't know if other single moms will will attest to this. I feel like it dating is it's scary after divorce, anyways. Yeah. But when when you're a single mom, it's like you can't win either way. So if you date mm-hmm. somebody that has kids, there's a few things that can happen. They can only love their kids and not be able to make room for anybody else. Mm. Or there's, you know, some other things that can happen with their ex spouses or stuff like that. Yeah. Or you can date people that don't have kids. Now, granted, this isn't true for either, either or, but yeah, yeah, yeah. you can date people that don't have kids and it doesn't matter what age range. Um, we build a lot of compassion of, um, through experience, experience. And so people that are around, like, kids are great but when you're around them all the time like people are like yeah it's draining so they can kind of have that compassion so people without kids sometimes are you know men but again I'm drawn to like very now very emotional men because that's I want an emotional connection um 
And so those usually are a little more understanding where you can sit down and talk through things and be understanding towards kids. Yeah. And I don't ever want to put that on in somebody else, but I also, you know, I went through a marriage where I was doing all of it and I don't want to do that. And, but at the same time, it's like the catch 22, like, I don't want somebody to, to feel like they have to give up their life to step into this. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So it's like, I feel like it's so much scarier to date because you're like, not that I'm not, I don't think I'm a great woman. I'm an awesome woman. I'm a half decent mom sometimes, but it is a lot. Yeah. To take on. So I feel like I, it's like scary to find somebody that is going to love me and love my kids as their own. It's like either, or, you know, it's like, so I don't know. I feel like having kids afterwards is harder. I got um, you in the dating world. Yeah. At this age. So when you were saying, um, you know, you grew up not really having the presence of your parents to show you like what a what kind of like a healthy relationship looks like. I, I, I'm kind of the same way. I mean, I, I'm adopted, right? And then my parents, um, my parents fought a, a quite a lot, uh, especially uh, my, my, my father was an alcoholic and he dove further and further into the bottle due to not until I found out until after he died, the the demons that I, he had to have been facing. And I would just always wish that he would have said something um, because that would have made a lot more sense. And I probably could have been a lot more empathetic towards that. Um, but he was very like, I'm the man of the house. I got to do this, that, or the other. Um, so like, I didn't, I didn't know what, like really what communication was, you know, and I never learned that because like, I never really saw it. And, you know, my parents grew up you know, to each their own. My parents, I grew up with my parents sleeping in separate rooms, but that's because my dad snored like no weather. Like he sounded like a, like he could wake the dead with his snoring. It's how loud it was. And so it's like, okay, like I get it. Like mom doesn't want to sleep in the same room as him, but, but you know, that probably took its toll on their marriage too. Like lack of like physical intimacy and, and, and things along those lines. Um, so yeah, I didn't, I didn't learn that. I didn't really learn that either. So my question for you after that would be like, what what has made you figure out the kind of love that you want and that you need and especially after the marriage that you did go through has it been difficult to kind of um figure out to heal from that and to like learn to try to figure out how to trust again yeah i think the trust part is always going to be hard Cause no matter what, we're taking a risk when we're, you know, having feelings for somebody. Um, but honestly, for me, the one part has been easy because I, for, for me, I did not, there was not a good emotional connection. I, there was so much that I was asking for. There was a lot of things and compassion and empathy Mm. now I can see immediately when something is not going to work and I, yeah, can, yeah. and I can cut it off I think the hard part is when you see a lot of things that can work and then it you know unravels which is has happened and so wait wait, wait let me, let me, when you say that you mean like you there's red flags but you see like potential in that like you see like all oh, this this is what the person could be and so you try to fight for that kind of ish but not necessarily like red flags in their who they are but like situational red flags okay like, you know what I mean like a, their essential like being is like like and their empathy and their personality and the way that they process because that's something too is like what I've um found on TikTok thanks TikTok um is um why like a lot of relationships don't work or marriages I mean yeah there's the money there's all that stuff but um it is conflict resolution and Mm. if somebody is able to have conflict resolution and and communication then you can you can make something work you know if they're both yeah to to put in the work 100% yeah but I know for me and what I have noticed is that I cannot 
doesn't matter if it's an anxiously or I mean, uh, avoidant, it could just be somebody that that's, a, they're not avoidant, but they're, they just don't have a big emphasis on communication. They can, yeah. they're, they're so secure that they don't understand why I need a lot of communication. I just need it. Yeah. I, it's I'm not similar. Like, yeah. It's not like you have to tell me everything, but like, you can't just not talk to me for two days. Like, yeah. what, what is happening in this dating world? Like, yeah. You just, you, you texted me and then you threw your phone in a lake and then you got it after three days. Like, that's not how it works. <laughs> like Testing that waterproof theory. <laughs> yeah. But it's, I mean, I have learned so much and honestly, like, I know that like some people have not divorce is messy, no matter what, nobody's going to make a right decision or say the right thing or anything like yeah. that. I have to say the way that I approach and handle relationships now, like, I don't care if nobody else is proud of me. Like I'm proud of me. And yeah. that's hard. That's been, hard that's the whole, I got, we got to celebrate that. That's a fucking huge step because <laughs> like, you know, coming from being like a people pleaser and you're like finally doing something for you. That's so fucking like, that's so fucking huge. And I, and I don't think, um, I think I, you know, I, I fucking struggle with that. I struggle with that so hard. And like, especially like when it came into like, for me and my own relationships that I've had, um, most of them, I've never, never gotten to a fight, never gotten to an argument because I just, I wanted them to like me so much that I would just kind of, um, I would just kind of shut down and then just be like, okay, yeah, I'm sorry. My fault. Instead of like, uh, in, instead of being able to like communicate my feelings and then as I'm going through like therapy I'm realizing more and more and more of like this isn't just like a recency thing like I've been like that since I was a kid and you know having people go like what's wrong tell like what's wrong with you I'm like mm -hmm. I don't know because I shut down like I immediately shut down and not know how to communicate like my feelings and how to uh, communicate what I was thinking and how I was feeling at that time and now it's been like such a huge, I think like in my place now, I guess I have to be in a relationship to find out. Um, but I like to think like I can communicate and try to be able to talk about how I'm feeling and like what was said and how that's make me, making me feel and try not to like bite my tongue so much and try to like, yeah. I guess, I guess you could say stick up for myself. But it's not even like like a hey you're attacking me and I'll fuck that that no no it's this side yeah. or the other it's like no like okay this is how I'm feeling this is what I'm thinking this is my thought process and that's why if I if I do start talking with somebody I do have an anxious attachment style and I I am trying to work to a more secure attachment style uh, which is what like the goal should always be for everybody but um, I would I would go like hey I always want to know what you're thinking. I always, I don't even care. It, like, and if you're like busy, cool. Just tell me you're busy. And then yeah. I can go like, okay, cool. Cause like my brain always goes to like worst case scenario. <laughs> it's like, oh my God, we haven't talked in a couple of hours. They fucking hate me. I must've said something stupid. Oh my God. I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. I, I don't, I don't want to just uh, stay, stay. Usually please, you're please. fine until you actually have feelings. And then you're like, all of a sudden you're like, oh, hundred yeah. percent. It's always like, yeah, when I'm, when I'm, yeah, if it's just like the the first like uh, initial part of talking or whatever, I'm like, oh, you know, they're probably just busy or whatever. No big deal. That's whatever. Then we start catching feelings. It's like, I know they're probably oh, really no. busy right now. It, it's like I have to catch myself and, and, and bring myself back to like the present because like a lot of times when we do go into like worst case scenarios, it's important to come back to reality. And instead of going like, I'm fucked, this fuck, they don't like me or whatever. And it's like, hey, how about we look at the evidence here? Uh, yeah. Have they said that at all? No. Have you had any indication that they feel that way? No. They haven't gotten back to you. Okay. Maybe they're they got really caught up in something. Or maybe they're just really busy. And we have to kind of like, especially in the beginning, you kind of have to give them that benefit of the doubt until you like you really figure out like, no, they just don't like talking. And can you handle that? Like, can you be secure yeah. in that type of thing? Like, do you like this person that enough to do that? But it's in that especially like those very for me in those very early beginning stages, it's it's about coming back to reality, coming back into the moment and yeah. really grounding yourself. And that's like the biggest thing that I'm kind of learning now. And again, yay therapy. Um, 
and it's just kind of like, woo. Um, it's just kind of like working through those types of things. Well, and it's funny you too, because like, um, and again, TikTok, which now we've got like three minutes or I don't know now, like 45 minutes or hundred minutes. I don't know whatever they're going for. Um, isn't there like, did you see that? We're, we're, we're giving it, we're giving it like a giant plug of, uh, a TikTok, a giant plug right now. Yeah. You're and welcome. So, we should yeah, get some monies. <laughs> Or put us on the people's oh, FYPs a lot more. Or give us a lot more on the FYP. Oh, I'm poor. That's all stop I shadow do. banning. No, yeah, stop shadow banning. Freaking. Anywho, um, granted, like, and it's, sometimes I've said stuff in a video and just like gotten like <laughs> obliterated in the comments. And you're like, I had 60 seconds to get a thought out. You know, like there's, you only have so much time. Um, but there is like a blanket statement of like, you know, everybody's like, oh, everybody's a narcissist and everybody's blah, blah, blah. Um, and I'm not saying that those, like, you know, that you're not, people can't see those and like really relate to them. Um, but sometimes like a partner is, and I put it on there that I was like, um, cause guys against me on TikTok a lot of times are like, she's too picky. You're just, just pick Mm. one. And I'm like, believe it or not, believe it or not, I've had guys say that to me too. They said, bro, just lower your standards. <laughs> like, Sunshine, you go find something else to do on the internet. Oh, I'm also, I'm also like, yeah, uh, I've had my heart ripped out and stunt on before. And that was already my state. That's putting my standards low. I think I yeah, raised them. So I avoid low. that. They found me first. Then they didn't like me. <laughs> I don't know how that happened. They found me. They said they liked me. It turns out they lied. They lied and it was gone. Um, But the thing is, is that like, because I've had, and I have some amazing men in my life. Um, Ones that, I mean, a few that I'm not going to lie, would give an arm and a leg. So they're like, you say the word, I'm there, we're together. (laughs) And it's nothing, they're they're amazing humans but they're not going to work for me. There's things that just aren't what I need, but it doesn't make anything wrong about them. And it doesn't mean they're an avoidant. No. And I'm an, an anxious. It doesn't mean that. It just means that like, there's just not what I need. And so sometimes everybody's like, if they're not talking to you, like, oh, they're an avoidant. And I'm like, no, that might not be it there. I know some guys that are really great guys that they're just not great banksters or they're, they're not, you know, whatever. Yeah. They, they really aren't, you know, attached to their phones all the time. They're, you know, Um, and you know, and I've, I've met and, um, I don't know if I'll say, but, um, I've met somebody, I don't know how we're, we're, this is okay. So we don't know how it's, this is beginnings. This could not be forever. It could, who knows, but what I have noticed about this is, and is when somebody, um, and I was just talking to my friend before I met this person that I was like, I really felt like I'm too needy and I'm always asking for too much. Mm. And, um, my friends was like, you know, there might be people that just, that's their natural inclination. It's not that they're trying to appease you because they know that you have this, but that just might be their natural thing to show up in that way. So, you know, and it's, and it puts your anxiety at ease. And I think this is like one of the, the first ones. Uh, granted, I'm not saying like it's forever, but like for the first time, I'm like, wow, this is what it feels like to not feel needy. All my, all, all that stuff get, get met. And I, but I don't feel like I'm being a burden because I don't have to ask for it. They just naturally do it. Mm. Yeah, that's huge. Yeah. And so it's, you know, strange knock on wood we'll see how it goes <laughs> well I've had, i had a i had i've had a i'll, I'll just open about it. i had a similar experience i started talking with somebody and i just kind of went like um like i explained my my anxious attachment stuff i was just kind of upfront about it which was huge for me because i'm very much of a uh you know, it's, it's for me when I deal, I usually just deal with my, uh, my anxious attachment style by myself, where I'm just like, Oh, I think in worst case scenario, but never saying anything. And then like, I, I, I can, I fessed up. I was like, yeah, I have some insecurities about you. And she goes, why? And then I kind of go into detail about it. And then she reassured me. And she was like, she was like, if you ever need to bring anything up like that, do it. I don't want you to feel anxious. 
and I was just like, how dare you? Ah! How, <laughs> how, how dare you? For how, you to be so kind. How, yeah, how dare you be kind to me and understanding what is this? Who uh, I'm so angry right now. <laughs> but I was that just like good for the TikTok content. Um, I you're not gonna I need to be emo, okay? If people don't see me emo on the internet, they're not gonna want to talk to me anymore. No, um, <laughs> but I was just like, wow, okay. And granted, like I'm I'm still, you know. It's like, this is like very, 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 like very beginning, like talking stages and whatnot. But I was like, wow, I was just more proud of myself that I even brought it up. And yeah. I was like, I was like, is this, is this what growing is? Is this what evolving is? Is this is what this... being an adult feels like? Because I feel <laughs> like I'm doing a great job. <laughs> is this becoming more mentally healthy and like healing? Is that huh. Am I better than everybody? <laughs> <laughs> Does therapy actually work? Um, that happened to me where I, um, you know, something had happened and I, I got a little triggered and it was my kids had to have my, like, or didn't have to have my phone, but they had like, it was right around the time where the day earned game time. And so I was like, I literally, they have, I have a tablet and phone because I don't have like TVs for everybody and tablets for everybody. Y'all get, so I'll share so that they can play a game together. Anywho literally was going to be away from my phone for 30, 45 minutes, anxious attachment person that just had something triggering happening, happening and not able to address. I was like, I kind of panicked for a minute. Mm. And so, you know, and nothing that they said was wrong at all. It was per perfectly fine, but I was like mulling it over and I couldn't reread the text because I don't have my phone. So afterwards I was like, you know, thank you for telling me that I'm scared. I was like, I have to, I have to say, like, I still want to see where this goes. This is why it triggers me. I'm really scared and I'm, I'm nervous. And that's such a, a big, and I mean, like talk about walls of text. Someone, my, one of my um, best guy friends, he's like, good Lord, you have to write a novel. I was like, listen, cause it, he'll get screenshots. If, for the record, anybody that has best friends where you're like, tell me if I'm crazy. And I was like, you are going to read all 45 paragraphs and you were going to like it. And you were going to tell me if I'm nuts. And, <laughs> and tell me if I should publish this. Yes. In the kindest of ways. He didn't get that one, but he's seen plenty. Um, but I would get like nervous about sending all this stuff. But for me, coming from a abuse where you are not to allowed to talk about things, I cannot sit with it anymore now that I've learned myself. And that was something that was, that didn't work in my marriage. Once I was learning how to deal with things, I have to address it right then. And yeah. sometimes I don't, and it's not that I'm, um, I've gotten good at, with like my language and, and stuff, but you can sense that I'm, I'm passionate about whatever. And it's not necessarily that I'm saying that you're you're completely crap and you're wrong, but this hurts me. It doesn't mean you did anything right or wrong. It could be whatever, but I'm, yeah. I, need, I need a partner that I can come and say, this makes me scared. And, um, the reaction to that was just perfect. Like immediately was like, I am, you know, like was, you know, didn't avoid or anything was like, you know, wanted to talk and, and talk it through. And that's, something that I need rather than be like, I mean, I've had guys tell me like, you know, if I say, Hey, like, I'm not, I just don't understand. Like maybe we just don't need to, you know, date or send, you know, wall text. And they're like, I said, I was busy. <laughs> like, you know, like that's the reaction you're like, Oh yeah. Or the reaction is, you know, like, just don't, you're just, you're being like, I thought and not too anxious, but like somebody was like, you are really overthinking. Just don't think about it. I can't, I can't have a partner. Yeah. That's a, yeah, yeah, yeah. I get that. Yeah. It's kind of like, no, I'm going to think about it and now I'm going to think about it even more and I'm gonna, it's going to go down a deeper, darker hole right now. Yeah. yeah no, I, I not to think about the elephant in the corner. And now I'm like, why is there an elephant in the corner and why would it fit in our house? And what has happened now? I'm thinking about 400 million things. Yeah. Like you just made it so much worse. I, like, I, I think it'd be like more understanding of being like, okay, I see this message. I, it's almost like, you know, for for me, I, every time someone tells me like a situation like that, I always kind of jump in my head. I'm like, how would I think that I would handle that? Because I don't know until I'm actually in that situation. 
But I like to think when you first said it, my first thought was, well, if I am really busy in the moment, I might just shoot a message back like, I don't have, I can't read this right now. I am going to, and I will get back to you when I have the opportunity. Right. And you know, what's so funny is like, this is, a, a, and that's why I realized like, again, I don't know if, you know, beginning stages, but I realized that is something that I hold dear. And this person just did on their own, like, Hey, I'm going into a meeting, you know, stuff like that, or, and the updates, and it doesn't even matter. Like, again, if they didn't do that, you know, if you answer back an hour or two later, most time I wouldn't think anything of it unless for whatever reason, if there was, I felt like something was iffy or off, or, you know what I mean? Like, it's just kind of, like for me to be like, and I don't have to be, I'm again, I'm an introvert. So I don't need to be doing something with a partner all the time. I have done a lot on my own, like in the last, I mean, I was married for nine and a half years, the last six years of our marriage, we maybe spent two years physically together. If, if that, because of the army, so I, I can be alone, Yeah. but I don't, I want, like, there's the things that I want. I want a partner that wants to go grocery shopping with me and wants to cook dinner together. And I want to hear about your day. I want you to want to know about my day. And, and it's not like a needy, like, if you don't tell me like something's wrong, but no, like, it's because I genuinely want, I want to share my life. Yeah. And like share your life and I yeah. want it to be a, a desire doing so, life together yeah and oh, that's I totally hear that I never had and for somebody to naturally do that I'm like okay and I um I would after my one relationship I really thought that the person was the love of my life and and I was, I had a hard time getting over that. That's something you and I have like, <laughs> I've sent you Instagram. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah. I was just like, I'm dying. Help me. <laughs> but quick rationalize this for me, please. Yeah. But it's so hard because like you, you start to date, but um, what I've learned is that with, with each new partner, I mean, I'm trying to make myself realize like there's things that I realize. I like that. And I think I do need that in a relationship. So regardless, mm. like whenever you do start to date people, it is the growing process of like, okay, this, I know that I need that because that helps me feel safe and secure. And then it will alleviate the anxiety. And, you know, eventually like we can move towards being more secure and, and things like that. And yeah. So, so do you feel like when you look at uh, failed relationships, like, you look at, you realize what you should, like what you would want in another relationship. Cause like, there could be like, well, there's aspects of this relationship that I really like, but these are these other aspects that really didn't work. And then when you find another partner, they kind of like, like, they do a little bit of this, but then they also do this as well. Um, Cause I know a lot of people would be like, we can look at past relationships and just be like, it was all shit. And you know, their, their lesson from it was don't do that again, or don't be with this kind of person again. And then sometimes people fall into like a, like a pattern of who they, who they keep dating, um, which is probably, again, I'm no psych, I'm no therapist whatsoever. So everyone who's listening or watching this, take this with like the grainest of salts because I could be a million percent wrong. Influencers that don't know what we're talking about. So you can just catch what you catch. <laughs> no, but it's, it, it's like, there's probably a lot of work that within yourself that you need to figure out. Like, why is this, why is this keep the same type of thing keep happening over and over again? Like yeah. for me, it's been like, uh, I realized that in a lot of my relationships, I was so desperate for them to like me. Mm -hmm. And I fell hard and fast because I was getting some kind of attention. I was getting attention, um, attention that I've lacked sorely. Now, thinking this through right now, uh, lacking love and affection that I guess I didn't really get as a kid. So my family was never like the, the, the physical, like lovey dovey. I mean, if anything, I was probably more like that with my mom and never with my father. Um, but even with my mom, my mom was like my bro. <laughs> like she was like a dude who like, like she, you know, my dad was, my dad was like more in the, he kind of watched sports, but he was kind of like more into like history and military stuff. And my mom was more like 
into baseball and into football and like her and I would could talk about sports and stuff a lot. Um, yeah. But yeah, so it, so like, yeah, for me, it was always the things I'm, I'm learning now with, of what I need is like, I'm learning more about, um, you know, trying to be more of myself and then trying to like appease what I think the other person might really want me to be. And that's a whole other like scary thing for anybody to go through. Like, wait, I got to be myself now. So if someone actually does like you for like who you are as a person, you're like, it seems a little sus. Like, are you sure? Are you sure? Cause everyone else in my life didn't like me for me. Granted, now that I think about it, I probably didn't give them the opportunity to actually get to know me for me. And that's my yeah. fault. Yeah. We're still growing and learning, but yeah, no, I mean, I look at, especially dating after, I mean, being with somebody for like 11, 11 years. Um, and then, you know, dating again, like it's, I have looked at stuff and there's, there. Uh, I realize what I need. And, and I mean, honestly, sometimes I think I'm more triggered by my ex-boyfriend than I am by my ex-husband. That's sad. Um, but there were so many things that I was like, ah, I know that I can be romantic and I know that I can really love somebody. And I know there was so many great aspects and he's, I mean, I like, we don't fit, but he's an amazing person. Like I do have to say that, but we don't fit. There's a lot of things that just don't, don't fit. And I think now looking back and now that I have been able to kind of detach a little bit, um, or a lot like, and really step back. It's like, yeah, we would, it's just, it's on both sides, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, but there was so much that I learned that I needed that I didn't know that I needed. And then like, you know, dating other people. And like, I mean, I haven't had like a full blown relationship since then, but I've, you know, dated some people and I realized like how, like there was new things that I didn't realize I don't want from him that I didn't know, you know, cause like I didn't like when I dated back in, it was my early twenties, you know? So it's, I do think that there is stuff that you can learn, um, and can like, and, you know, and it is a, it's a learning and growing process for everybody. Um, so yeah, there is a lot of stuff that I have taken where I'm like, okay, that's a new thing where that's a nope, <laughs> that is going to be a nope from now on. But there's other things that I'm like, wow, I really liked, I really liked that, or I really liked this, or, I, um, and yeah, um, I, I did learn that there was a, cause I did not have very much of romantic side with me. I mean, like it was, I hate to say it, like, you know, typical marriage of just, you know, day by day. And there wasn't a lot of, um, passion, but I've, you know, been in a, a longer term relationship now since then of like, okay, that's like, I, I thought that something was wrong with me. Mm. I really thought that I was, and that's why kind of my TikTok journey of, I pushed a lot of things down because of trauma and everybody knew me as like, oh, you grew up with like the traumatic childhood, blah, blah, blah. You know, she's got it all together. And I was very much like, I didn't share my emotions. I didn't cry, cry in front. Of, and it's still hard for me to cry in front of people. And, and like you said, where you, people ask me, and I've been getting a lot better at that, but it's also, it's scary and hard for someone to be like, how are you? And I'm like, not good. Yeah. I'm not good right now. Yeah. Um, it's because that's very vulnerable and yeah. I don't do well with being vulnerable. It's why I'm funny. Same. Yeah. That's where, uh, that's where my, my, my sense of humor came from. It, for me, like my sense of humor came from, as like a defense mechanism. You know, if I can at least make somebody laugh, at least there's that, even though like I'm really suffering on the inside and I'm like, all right, I, I guess, I, I guess I can handle that. And, you know, I always grew up like the funny fat kid, but I was the funny fat kid because I was making fun of myself before anyone else could. So that was like my big, like, um, defense mechanism but then that also kind of turned into like the more of the people pleasing like oh if I can make you laugh that means you like me cool I'm gonna try to make you laugh all the time and you'll think that nothing's wrong with me even though like I'm going home uh having like major suicidal ideations and and all these other crazy things going on in my head and I, and me not knowing how to express them and just going like I guess I have to deal with this on my own and I'm fucked because yeah 
you know and what I mean? Um, two of like, um, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, you're fine. Uh, of like, of mental health uh, and, um, in a partnership and how like, yeah, we are responsible for our own mental health. Like mm-hmm. it can't all be my partner's you know, fault of whatever it is, because like I have dealt with like some serious suicidal issues and that's hard for me to admit. Um, and scary for me because like, even in my divorce, like that was, I was in a partnership. I was in a marriage, not even just partnership where I mentioned multiple times that I was hurting that bad. Mm and not and never got help and yeah. then, and then after the fact it gets used against me to say i'm a neglectful mother <sighs> so yeah and it and that always comes from people who just don't get it and like they don't realize how lucky they are that they haven't had to deal with those kind of thoughts and i remember um when i was in college i was so incredibly depressed that I was seeking attention from anybody to like talk. And I thought like, Oh, if I, if I open up to this person, maybe they'll start like, they'll feel they'll pity like me. You know what I mean? And it got to the point where um, the head of our, I was a theater major in college. And so the head of our theater department took me to the side and was like, Hey, come walk with me. And then he took me to the um, like the psychiatric part of our campus. And he's like, you need to have a sit, you need to sit down and talk with this person. And cause like he was hearing like shit that was going down and, um, I talked with them and like, I even, I was going to attempt, um, before that. And, uh, when I was going to do it, I heard my dad walking down the hallway. I was going to do it in my room. And then, uh, I heard my dad walking down the hallway and that kind of just like scared me straight and it scared me shitless. Cause I was like, well, shit, what the fuck am I doing? Um, but so then I had to go down and I just kind of like vented to this person. And in my head, I was like, I know it's just because I'm fat and I just need to lose weight. And if I lose weight, that'll be fine. I just need to do that. And I lose weight. I'll finally be happy and yada, 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 which turned out not to be true. because <laughs> I had a, I ended up developing like an eating disorder and never feeling like I was good enough still, no matter how lean or good I, I looked or whatever. Um, but then uh, I came home. And I think like, it's like maybe like a few days later, my parents were in the living room, this very room that I'm in right now. And um, I'm looking at where I was sitting. Uh, and I and I looked at them and I told them what happened. And I was just like, yeah, I, I'm, I'm really, really depressed. And my mom was like, oh my God. But my dad just went, why? You have fucking everything. I, I, you have a house, a roof over your head. I'm paying for your school, uh, even though I had student loans out. But he was, I, it was almost like I was using student loans to pay for shit that I was doing for myself. Um, and then uh, he's like, I give you food. I, I do all this. Like you have everything. Why? Why the? Like, and and you know, when I look back at it, it, I mean, it was it was twofold. Like he was shutting me down, telling me like you shouldn't be sad. Like stop fucking being depressed. And like me going okay i guess i should just never open up and talk about my shit anymore or ever um and then the other part i I think and this is how i'm rationalizing it it could have been a shot to his ego because he's trying he's trying to do his absolute best to give me everything and make sure i you know the the typical parent thing of um i want to make my i want my kids to grow up better than i did type of thing and you know my dad came from little money and you know, we're not like rich, but like, you know, good middle class, you know, and, um, and I think it was kind of like a shot to his ego, but it kind of taught me like, I can't, can't talk to him about this type of stuff. And my mom never really fully got it. And like, I grew up with like, you know, if you go to therapy, you're, you're crazy. Like you're an insane person like cause you have to go to therapy. Like, why can't you just figure your shit out and handle it on your own? And it's weird that like my view has completely gone 180 and i'm like no fucking everybody needs fucking therapy and that's why i promote companies like like change your algorithm for anyone who doesn't know about it uh you know it's a, it's a free mental health resource for people to have like 
free access to mental wellness and uh, that's taught by a therapist. Um, and like, yeah, so I, I totally get that. Like, you know, you're trying to tell your husband, I'm really fucking sad. And you think like the one person who's supposed to be there for you and supposed to understand and supposed to support you goes, no, like, and you're, it, that's going to make anybody like shut down. And that's, yeah, it's really understandable. And it's, it, it sucks. And I'm sure for you, that was probably like an indicator. Maybe I'm not in the right relationship right now. Yeah. Well, and the, that was the thing was like, it was, um, you know, um, the kids, the kids need you. Yeah. And, um, they do. And it was after the fact of our divorce of things coming across or, you know, my names, but um, of like, oh, I've had suicidal thoughts, but I didn't, you know, people that really are going to do suicide won't tell people. Oh my God. And for me, there was, you know, and unfortunately there was, I had told him twice and um, we'd had a gun. And so I was having, it was during COVID granted I was stuck at home by myself with an autistic kid and a brother no not a lot of help you know and this was drowning and um you know texted him that was like you need to come home and hide the gun that I was scared for the kids because the one thing that stopped me was because the last thing I want to do as a mom is I was just up I remember just being like I just wanted like it's not I just wanted to just it to stop and I know that yeah. I think of like you're like I literally just want to lay down and I'm just so you're just so tired of every uh, there's so many demands and um I just didn't want them to hear that because we had a room and I was like that was the thing I didn't want them to hear you know yeah like, your mom shoot themselves in a room yeah can't get in there's nobody there and to even say that to get to the point to say that you need that much help was so hard for me and then for people to be like almost as if it was for attention when I had been asking for help before then of like I'm having thoughts of hurting I said that twice I'm having thoughts of hurting myself and you know I really feel for those people of like, I, and I mean, there's always this camp of like, again, I'm, I'm a mom of an autistic kid, right? So there's people in the autistic community where it's like, well, your kid is, um, which they don't like high and low functioning. Well, your kid can do this. So your life is easier kind of thing. And you're like, I mean, yeah, my, my kid can talk now. He couldn't when he was younger. Yeah. You know? But now he looks normal, quote unquote normal. So people look at me like, like I've even been to doctors. We, because military, you move all the time and you always have to see new psychiatrists, psychologists, doctor, blah, 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 ABA therapist, oh, like OT, all this stuff. And I saw, we saw a doctor that looked at me and was like, autistic. He's level two. There's level three to autism there's one two and three he's level two and I mean he had behavioral therapists all the the testing everything and looked at me was like are you sure they got that right mm. <laughs> you're like yeah but he's been through hours and hours. so it's the same thing with like people that have struggled with suicidal thoughts of they're like something like that of to downplay and diminish how serious it was and the only way I can even relate this is like one of the marriage counselors that we went to with for a marriage, we showed up and she goes, you guys don't seem like you're one of the couples that are, you guys aren't on the brink of a divorce. I left them a few years ago. <laughs> like after that, I was dead serious. You can't look at somebody and say, you know, well, you're not serious because you told people somebody that was serious. Yeah, it's just yeah, someone who's saying something is like 
I don't think people understand how brave and how difficult that actually is to be able to do that. So kudos for you to doing that. And thank you so much for sharing that because like, I know just from my, my own content that I have made, I have seen comment after comment and I've gotten messages of going like, the only reason why I'm still here is because of my kids. Otherwise they'd want to end it. and They don't want to put their kids through that. And so I think you sharing that is going to help a lot of people know that they're not alone on that. So I thank you for that. And I'm really happy that you're still here. And for anyone out there who is struggling with those thoughts, like seriously, so happy that you're here. And as difficult as it is to reach out, do it. There's so many reasons. There's a lot of resources out there. And uh, if you go, the Wayne website that I know is changealgorithm.com and they have a list of resources. That's not just like, hey, sign up for our, our mental wellness classes. It's, hey, if you need help with this, that, or the other, and they have so many resources. Uh, so please like uh, definitely jump into that. Was that the heavy thing that you wanted to talk about today that you were yeah, going that through? Was it. I was like, you know, I'm so sorry, guys. This is going to be a really uh, off color joke, but you know, off in yourself. So we're like, yeah, let's go for it. Like, let's oh, talk right. about it. So is that something that you've been, you've been battling um, recently too? Like those, those ideations? Uh, n- not, n- not, well, I had like a moment of medication. Like for those, I mean, I'm on medication. I'm on, you know, ADHD meds and, and antidepressants. And it was just an adjustment where I, it was a two, two days, not that dark, but I remember just thinking, I just want to go to sleep. I just don't want to do mm. anything. I just want to go. Yeah. To sleep. It was never, it was never as bad as it was because, you know, COVID hit yeah. and I, for those that didn't know, I was a wedding photographer. And so that, you know, finally I, those that have special needs kids or those that are parents, like that has a tough kid, like, you know, it a lot like it takes up a lot and you do and it's nothing wrong that the kids take up a lot because that's what they're meant to do they're growing you know and everybody deserves to have somebody to help them along but that does take a job it's a job yeah so I finally got to where man now I get to have a career you know I had a husband that got to you know flourish his career and I felt like I was trapped I mean honestly in in this with nobody to help me you know, you're supposed to do parents. It should be like, I don't like the gender norms. It's, it should be both of us working together. Yeah. And so, and then COVID, I finally was getting like, I was really getting a good start and then COVID hit. And so, um, for those who don't know, I'm up in the Pacific Northwest and we were locked down for a lot longer. Kids were not at school for a lot longer than the whole country. And I understand, but the mental toll it took on parents. And for me, I was in the thing where I had to be, I, I didn't have a choice. We had a special needs kid. And that was something too about like, people were like the divorce of like, oh, well then you, you know, went and had to go spend more money to have another place and stuff like that. It's, and I, I think when you say people like that are parents that, you know, say it's my kid's of the reason why I'm here, but it's also, you need to have your own identity. Like I need to have, I, yes, I am a mom, but I have to have my own identity and my own things that fill me up and, and, and everything like that. And I want them to be, I want to be there all the time, but mentally and emotionally, I can't always do that. I can't drain myself that hard for anybody. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I, I remember I have a few friends that I can like call and talk to and like, literally be like, I'm not, I feel like I'm just the worst mom today. Cause I've like nothing they've, you know, I've lost it a million times and then, you know, and not be, not be like, well, maybe you should say this when they're upset. They'd be like, girl, me too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Do you, um, do you find, do you find now that you try to give yourself those times and those moments for you to recharge where like, you know, 
sneak off and take a bath or like you like playing video games like going like hey mom needs to zone out for a little bit and like play video games like if you need something you gotta tell me but like otherwise go play or something like that like finding ways to allow yourself to like fill your cup up a little bit even if that means like oh these dishes aren't getting done right now yeah these these laundry is not getting folded or put away or this needs to get vacuumed and cleaned up or whatever but being able to give yourself the amount of time just to be like I can deal with that later. I need to, I need to give myself some energy now. Like, do you find like you're giving, you're being a lot kinder to yourself in that way and like giving yourself moments to do that? I do. And it is still, you know, a battle, like obviously for kids development, you know, they shouldn't be on TV and video games, but there are days where I, I, I mentally just can't. Yeah. It's not every day. And that's what I was talking to some people where you just feel guilty. I'm like, they've literally been on TV all day. The pediatrician or the psychologist or psychiatrist or whatever be like, how much TV? And you'd be like, enough (laughs) to get enough. Okay. That's all you need to know. But I mean, there is days where I'm doing things with them and I'm coloring them, but you, no person can do that 24 seven. And, and honestly, I mean, I've seen the the dang thing of like, um, when I wanted to have 50, you know, 50, 50, or like be able to parent, parent 50, 50, I had to get a divorce. And I, I resonate with that. I have more time to myself, even though I'm a single mom and still have them a majority of the time, I get more alone time than I did in a partnership. Mm. So that for me was like, yeah, okay it's, you know, that's what I need to do. So, I mean, and I, hopefully I'm mean, whatever people, that's the thing too, with TikTok of like, I second guess everything I put on. And I'm like, I try not to step on anybody's toes. Like, I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, but sometimes I just need to say what my perspective, I'm sure my ex-husband yeah. perspective is very different or my ex-boyfriend's or whoever's, but that was something that like, why, you know, I kind of even walked away from TikTok twice was like, I felt like if I say how I felt in whatever it is and how that affected me, it's going to hurt their feelings. Cause they're going to feel like every, you know, even though I don't name names, yeah, unless I obviously say my marriage, but that people are going to be like, Oh, she's bad mouthing somebody it's just that's what that was my real realistic point of view yeah just because you're sharing your experience like that doesn't mean like it's really speaking ill will towards people I know I've talked about my previous relationships too and uh you know last person I dated they got really offended because they were like why are you like you're talking about me I'm like this isn't about you it's about me yeah and I'm like and, and like even that I'm not even talking about you in this video you think I'm talking about you but it's not you at all, but you're assuming that it is. And that, uh, to me, I'm looking back and I'm like, that's probably saying more, but you know, me, I'm at, right at my people pleasing stages of like, and I'm still a people pleaser. Like this sounds like, you know, fuck people. No, I'm still a people pleaser. But at, at that time in a, in a relationship, I was just like trying to like reassure them, like, no, 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 you're amazing. You're great. You're awesome. Even though like I probably had issues that I just didn't speak up about. Um, yeah. But yeah, like I speak, uh, yeah, whenever I talk about like previous relationships, uh, I've had people assume it's this person or that person. And I'll be like, no, you're wrong. And thank you for randomly finding my page. Um, (laughs) But, but it's like, but I'm like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not talking ill about the person I'm talking about my experience and how I felt. That doesn't mean all of my exes, I wish them absolutely nothing but the best. Um, like I know one of them and they're pretty much all with other people and they all seem to be thriving in those relationships. And I'm like, that's great. That's awesome. I'm happy for you. Like live your life, do the best. I'm like, sorry that things didn't work out between us. And like, there was things wrong. And I reflect on those relationships and like me talking about previous relationships is me reflecting on them and talking about them. And like, you know, I don't, I don't regret any of them, but I realized where like, I, you know, in some of them I had abandonment issues because like 
they bailed on me when I needed them most. And I didn't speak up about it. And that's where I learned like, dude, you got to talk up. You need to speak up. You need to be like, Hey, I need you right now. And I, and I think for, how do you deal with that abandonment? Because I do, I, I do want to hear that question because like, that is a very serious wound in me. And it's why yeah. I'm so inter- like, or independent is because it's scary to give somebody the access to abandon me and hurt me. Yeah. Uh, I totally get that. I think for me right now, uh, where I'm currently at in my mental health in my life, I, I feel like I'm, um, like we said earlier, right. Like very early in our, in our talk of you kind of just ha- kind of have to get the, the leap of faith and, and, just try and I've asked therapists this too and I was like you kind of have to and if they don't then you have to realize it's a reflection of them not necessarily you it's not something you did wrong they just weren't able to meet those needs like I remember and if this person comes across this this is going to be really specific but I'm not going to name names but um the biggest sign I've had two instances of abandonment like majorly in a relationship um one was like very early on we were talking and I just had a tummy tuck surgery to remove excess skin and she came over to visit and um I had to adjust my bandages and I stood up really quickly and I blacked out Mm. and I fell and I had a coffee table in my room and my stomach hit the coffee table Mm. and then I came to right away and I went what the fuck I was freaked out I had no idea she was freaked out and she's like I'm I'm gonna leave and I went please don't leave please stay and she left anyways and I went well fuck and I just stopped talking to her I was just like okay this is done this is done this is over like fuck you 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 left me when I said please stay and that was a real issue for me and then the other relationship where it really are this is it's not we ended probably like two or three weeks after this incident happened. But when I look back on it, I go, this is my biggest indicator that it was over was uh, we went to the movies uh, and we were seeing uh, the second Mary Poppins movie. Right. And uh, did you see that movie with Emily Blunt as Mary Poppins? Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. So spoiler alert for anyone who hasn't seen that movie, but uh, it's essentially the kids from Mary Poppins are all grown up. The son has, the house that they grew up in and his wife just died. So their children are missing their dead mom. And this was like a year after my mom died. Mm. So I went relate Terry's eyes watering. And then there, and then he's worried about losing the house and they need to find the deed to prove that they paid off the house is paid off and it's theirs. Um, me at the time, uh, not working, freaking out about money, freaking out that I'm going to lose my house and that I'm not going to, I'm going to end up homeless and I'm going to end up on the streets. So another thing that resonated with me. And then the third thing was the last movie I ever watched with my father before he passed away was Mary Poppins. Mm. And I knew when she said that she wanted to see Mary Poppins, that thought of, well, that was the last movie I saw with my dad popped into my head, but I was like, oh, it's been like five years. I should be okay. Like, I don't think this you will affect me. You didn't and have I, a I had zero idea what the oh. plot was. So I'm going into this movie thinking like, oh, I'm probably going to be like a little like, oh, I miss my dad. But then like the whole plot came through and like, I was like, I cried like for like two straight hours. And then like, credits are wrong I'm crying and she sees me crying and she's like trying to like hold my hand because like she realized like the plot of the movie was like oh shit that's his life and then like we're on our way back and she's like are you okay and the only words I could muster out were Mary Poppins was the last movie I watched with my father it was like the hammer on it she was like why the fuck didn't you say something and I was just like I thought I'd be okay and then we got back to my house and she was like okay I'm gonna go and I was like, can you please stay? Like, I, I, I've just been bawling for like two and a half fucking hours. Like, I'm in a really dark, not good place right now. And she's like, no, I got to go to work in the morning. So now I can't stay. Yeah. And I was just like, 
cool. So when I actually like need, need somebody, somebody, they're not showing up for me. And where, and that, that thread has kind of played in my, my, in my relationships where I need somebody and I'm always showing up for them. And then it just stops happening. So like, I guess in my point in life now, the way I'm dealing with it is that I'm not allowing it to happen. Like I won't stand up for it. Like say hypothetical, you and I started dating very early on and I realized I need you for something or I need something. And I'm realizing really quickly that you're just not that kind of person. And instead of me going like, um, well, she, she's really cute. She's, she's really cute. And she's still giving me attention. So I guess I'll still, it's okay. I'll deal with it later. It's like, no, I got to be like, Hey, this isn't going to work out. Like I need this. I need this in a relationship. I need you to be there for me just as much as I'm there for you. I need that respect. It's a, like, I'm looking for a partner in my life for us to be there for each other and support each other. And I don't care. Like, like I want you to chase your dreams. I want you to have your goals. I'm going to have mine. And I hope you, we can both be there together and support one another. And if we're going through shit, we can go through it together and be supportive. Cause like, I know me, I, you know, not only do I have depression, anxiety, I have PTSD. Um, like I know that I'm going to have bad days. And I know that with my healing process is I'm learning tools to help me with those days because I think no matter how healed anybody is, they're going to have their bad days. Yeah. They're always going to arise. It's always going to be a come up. I think any form of trauma, grief, anything, it's all your body holds on to it. Your subconscious is holding on to it and it will float back up. And then yeah. the thing with therapy is it teaches you um, what to do in those moments and how to try to bring yourself back to center. Does yeah. it always work? No, it doesn't always work. You're going to have, like, I, I know for me, I've had my days where, you know, I've recently had days of unaliving myself and not being here anymore and going like, no one, no one would know. It'd probably be a, a while before anybody realized I was gone. No one would have a clue. What's the point? No one gives a shit or whatever. And the thing that I got into that, when I got into that headspace, and whenever I do get into that headspace, for me, what helps me is two things. One, don't make a permanent decision based off of a temporary emotion, because this is something that will pass. The next is, I say to myself, and there are people who, who struggle more, I go, just get to tomorrow. Just get to tomorrow, because you don't know, like, Maybe you'll get a good night's sleep and you'll wake up feeling a little bit better. For, me, for some people, it's yeah. like, sorry, it's, but for some people, it's like, get to the next hour, get to the next minute, get to the next second or whatever, whatever keeps you going, no matter how long that takes. Yeah. And like, sleep, like uh, for me, uh, uh, somebody that has struggled with the same suicide thoughts and um, sleep, <laughs> I know that sounds so dumb and so simple. But sometimes I'm just like, I just need, I'm just so overwhelmed and so tired. I just need to do whatever I need to do to get to sleep. Mm -hmm. That's, that helps your body just, yeah. And your nervous system, because you do hold on to that. And you're, and it's funny because like I, um, my natural state with my ADHD and all this stuff, depression isn't my natural state. Anxiety is, but you're so ramped up this way that your body can't stay that revved up without crashing all the way down into depression because I'm, I'll just stay anxious for way too long that I crashed into depression. And, um, it's, it's just your, your body is trying to, to regulate. And it is like that, um, you know, the temporary it is, but when you're in it, it's hard because you're like, I love when people are like, take a deep breath. You're like, I'm, I'm drowning. There's no air. What do you mean? Take a deep breath, you know? Yeah. So, it, and, and for me, the, the thing is that has helped with people that understand. And I think that's the thing is like, um, people try to re like, especially when it came to me with, with my su suicidal thoughts of like, of telling me what, what all I have to live for, 
for me was effort and work you wanted out of me. And I'm like, I'm already depleted. Yeah. No, I just want to go to bed. Like, I just literally don't want to, you know, like it was just like that kind of thing. Um, but one of, so one of my exes and I won't name names to either kudos to him. I didn't listen, but kudos to him, um, <laughs> was, he was like, you're what you're asking for. He was like, you're not needy. It's not neediness, but I can't need it. It's what you're asking mm. for. too much. You're not being too needy. It's perfectly valid needs. I just can't need it. Did I listen? Hell no. Nah. And <laughs> like, it turns into like, the, oh, that's fine. I'll figure it out. You're like, it's great. We're going to make it work. And then uh, he's like, hey, I, I, I told you this. And you're like, yeah. touche. Yeah. But because like for me it's like always been where everybody um I always feel awkward and I've always felt awkward and it is weird to be on um I talked to somebody um not too long ago that was like it's really strange to be I mean I don't think I'm the greatest looking thing but like to be like people are like you know get that kind of attention because that was not what I I grew into myself it took to my 30s (laughs) I grew into it. Took a long time. Girl, but- I'm gonna stop you real quick. I'm gonna say, own your shit. If you think you're hot, say you're fucking hot. Don't, don't. None of this. I, you know, I'm not. No, 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 no. This is here. We're, 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 we're here to be like, no, nah, you fucking own your shit. You're hot. Fucking own it. Okay. Like. Okay. So I'm right. hot now. I wasn't always hot. <laughs> so I don't know. Now all I know is awkward. And I was like, my personality is like fully formed. And I'm like, I don't know what to do with this now. <laughs> the hell do you do with this? <laughs> um, but it's it's just a strange um, thing to navigate, especially like with the internet world. It is like, it is for no. me because like, I'm like, I'm always awkward. So people are like, oh, you're confident. I said, no, you don't understand. I understand what it's like to be uncomfortable in every situation that's the only reason i i seem confident because people are like oh you just get on you know you just say whatever i'm like do you know how awkward i feel most of the time even off the freaking video and you're like and you have no idea how many times it took me to even make that video like i had to like make sure wait no that sounds wrong wait no i, I fucked up oh, shit. Oh, 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 oh. yeah yeah because it's like and i i think that like because I've just gotten to where, and I think as we get older, I mean, that's the one thing that I've loved about my thirties and everybody else that I've like talked to one of my best friends is also named Tia. Um, and she's, um, pepper and I'm salt. She a little dark, I'm a little less skin. That's cool. Um, but we, I was like, go Tia, you know who you are. Um, I was like, we're soulmates. She's married. You can be the lover of life, but her and I soulmates. Um, you can love her, but you'll never love her like I love her. You never love her like I do. But we talked about like how, like in your 30s, you do. I'm done trying to earn people's approval. I think we it's the been the funnest part of my 30s and why I have I finally feel like myself. Mm-hmm. And I do have the people play, like there's still I battle that, but then that kind of outweighs it because I'm just like, you don't come home with me. You don't, yeah. you don't make my life any better. Like, so who gets shit <laughs> if you don't like me or you don't agree? Yeah, you, it's true. The older you get, I've heard someone go like, what's the best part about like, like a lot of yeah. people look at 30 and they go, oh my God, my life is over. I can't figure it. It's like, nah, it's literally just because, I mean, I'm a person who like, I didn't have my twenties. Like I, it was either my dad died or my mom died. Uh, and so, or like me taking care of my mom. So I didn't really get to like, fuck around in my 20 i didn't get to fuck around and find out i was literally just now like, he's making up for it in his 30s he's like not really eh, no not know. really no it's like in my 30s <laughs> no in my 30s i'm like oh i can actually like be myself and you just kind of like you know one of the things that as weird as this is going to sound that i'm grateful about my traumas is that it has made me who i am and it made me it put a perspective on things for me of the uh, of um there's just so much shit that just doesn't matter. Yeah. Like there's such a, like you learned more about like a big picture of life. Like I'm like, sometimes people do stuff and I'm like, that's just sounds so petty. And it just sounds so like, there's so much more in the world that's going on for you to give two shits about versus like, Oh my God, I can't believe this person's wearing this thing. It's like, 
who, who who cares? Like, how is that hurting you? How is that bothering you with your life? Like think bigger picture or like think more about like there are, there's literally more important things to, to worry about or stress out about or like give a shit about than something petty like that. Like focus on you and make yourself happy. And that's been like really hard for me because people pleasers their heart the first thing that you go hey you need to focus on you you need to think things for you I don't know what that looks like I was never taught I was taught to always please others and do things for others put others before myself and like that was like the biggest lesson that my mom taught me being her caregiver taught me like this is what it's like to love somebody unconditionally uh which uh it's a whole other discussion that I can get into probably another time but um but it taught me like what it really was to like and I'm sure motherhood has taught you that too of like what it is to really put others before yourself and what i'm learning now is i also need to put myself first too like if i have my cup full enough where i can do it cool i got you but again it's like we talked about a lot earlier setting the boundaries of um setting those boundaries of i can't right now mm-hmm. like i want to but i got to focus on me right now yeah and that was that was the hardest thing for me was the people that were like um even in divorce of or like parenting or stuff was like all we're hearing is is that you just you want your happiness before everybody else and it's not necessarily your happy happiness but having to sit with and be okay with I need to be whole and I need to be filled before I can pour into somebody else and yes and that is, that's hard. And, and being a mom, you see, you know, especially this day and age, like there's all kinds of, you know, I don't know, everybody has an opinion and it's freaking like buttholes. You don't need to show them to everybody. <sighs> so like, everybody's got one. You don't got to show the world. That's so specific. That's that so specific. specific. <laughs> <laughs> Opinions are like buttholes. We all got some. Okay. Doesn't mean you need to go showing everybody. Doesn't mean I want to see it, but if that is something that you're into, cool, no <laughs> kink shaming here. We are no kink shaming. Um, Unless kink shaming is your kink, then have fun. <laughs> right? Safe words. Um, oh my gosh. Pineapple. That, pineapple, right? Pineapple. But like that was, that was the hardest thing was feeling selfishness as a mother because in this day and age especially everybody's like we just give them organic apple juice they don't ever watch tv we make crafts with them from 4 30 in the morning listen i, I get if that makes you happy great i don't it doesn't care work for everybody yeah it doesn't and and i do understand consistency with your kids and like i mean there is people where you're like okay you're they're like oh they're just doing whatever get up and help them do something I get I get it but I do understand where it's you still have to have the separation and so the the parenting thing I think has been again like I didn't see I grew up with a single dad and he he made a lot of mistakes I'm not angry at him I forgive him there's not a relationship but I don't think gender, especially when it comes into the marriage and and stuff like that, of like of a partnership or anything, I don't feel like it matters who does what. As long as you're both showing up and one person is not carrying the load all the time. Now there's, you know, we, you have ebbs and flows of relationships. You have ebbs and flows of mental health where you really do. You're like, okay, I'm, I'm going to be a partner for this person and show up, but that can only last for so long you know it's gotta it's gotta be a give and take it can't always be a take 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 you know and that's what I've learned in being in dating and parenting and all of it of like I'm gonna put myself first until I find the person that will give to me and then I can give to them it's a hundred a hundred I don't care about that 50 50 bs yeah Like we may not match perfectly, but if somebody is always willing to, to show up, what, I mean, you know what I mean? What else do you need? A thousand percent. Um, I cannot thank you enough for your time and helping me out with this. Uh, So the way I end all these lovely podcasts 
is uh, I'm a big proponent of uh, counting your victories. Um, and it could be, especially like every day, like finding something within your day that you can be really proud of, it, whether that is you just got up and you got out of bed and you ate and drank some water or something like that, ate or drank water, ate food, drank water. It's weird. Um, <laughs> or like, you know, you solved world hunger. Like it doesn't matter how big or how small it is. It's important to count those victories. So Tia, my question for you is what was your victory for today? Oh man, my victory for today was that I, I showed up for myself and I was honest and genuine today that when I needed it, if I was like, yeah, I'm sad, you know, I had a kind of a rough day with kids in school and stuff like that. But, um, I'm, I'm proud of myself for proving to myself that like, yeah, I can do that and, and not really be feeling guilty over it, that I'm proud of myself for that. And that's a good trait and skill to learn. That is amazing. Uh, for me, mine was, uh, so yesterday, uh, for those of you who don't know, I do DoorDash and Uber Eats for work. And I got really stressed out um, yesterday because both my apps crashed and I couldn't work. And my, I have a, my brain always goes to worst case scenarios. And so like my dot was like, oh my God, I can't work tonight. I'm not going to make enough money. I'm going to lose my house. I'm going to go home. I'm going to be homeless. I'm fucked. And I was, no matter how much I was trying to like rationalize going like, well, now you get to go home and like, you know, you can do some yard work or do something else productive and now you're not making money, but you're still doing something. And while I did do that, I was still, I still had a really bad headspace. And I woke up this morning in that same bad headspace, but my victory was I was able to pull it out, pull out myself out of it by really bringing, checking in with myself and bringing myself back to center and going like, I know that's what you think that's going to happen, but what's the reality of the situation? It was one day. Uh, yeah, it was a struggle. And yeah, maybe this whole week has been slow and, or whatever, but that was one day. Things always are going to figure itself out. The money always figures itself out. And you're going to figure it out. It's going to be fine. You're going to be fine. And I was able to tell these things to myself and really kind of like bring myself back to present. And then as soon as I was doing that, I just kind of felt like this weight get lifted off my chest. And I just kind of went, okay, it's going to be all right. Focus on what you're doing right now. Focus on the task at hand and control what you can control. What was going on with that was out of your control. And it's not your fault. You did nothing wrong. It was just kind of like a shitty thing that happened. And that was just like a really big victory for me today because before I would definitely be in that mindset for like a while going like, fuck, I got to work like 8 million hours now to try to make up for that one lost day. And it's just like, no, this is some shit that happened. It sucks that it happened, but you'll figure it out. And yeah, that was my victory for today. Good job. I'm proud of you. That's a good thing to do. That's no, thank okay. you. That's I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> well i appreciate you so much for all this and for everyone who's listening or watching i appreciate all of you so very much uh, please do the whole liking and subscribing and leaving a comment and uh sharing this with with anybody who you think uh might want to listen to conversations like this and the most important thing i will ask of you is to please continue to be kind to yourselves um and I hope you are all having a wonderful day, night, week, whatever, whenever you're listening to this. And the last thing I'll say is be good. <laughs>